I did it again. I can't help myself. I'm moving. I don't need this stuff. And I can't help myself. I'm at a dealer auction. I bought a car that I know I shouldn't have bought. I'm hoping it has something that I hope it has in it. Down here, come on baby, have a supercharger. I don't think you do, but have one. I know better. I know better. Why do I do these things? Craig, stop. You have a problem. Stop. I'm at a dealer auction. I bought a car that I know I shouldn't have bought. I'm hoping it has something that I hope it has in it. Did I say that right? I don't know. Today I'm at a dealer auction. I spent $1,800 on a truck that I'm hoping is supercharged, that I'm hoping is pretty rare, that I know I shouldn't have bought because I'm trying to change and I can't. My name is Craig from Flying Wheels. Let's go check out this car and hope that I didn't make the mistake that I think I did because I keep repeating the same process over and over and over, which I think is actually the definition of mania, manic, psychotic. I don't know. Let's get going. I've made video after video after video saying I'm gonna change I'm gonna go back to my roots being a youtuber ruined my dealership because now I buy things that make me smile now I buy things for videos instead of buying things that sell I did it again I can't help myself I'm moving I don't need this stuff and I can't help myself I love the auctions I love the hunt I love buying things I love the retail therapy of it and I just like making videos just just love me please just let me do what I want the things that make me happy and then be happy with me I have a truck that I haven't if bid on if meanings I'm the high bidder if I get it I think I stole it if it has what I think it has in it if I don't get it I'm completely okay with it because I don't need it I think it has a supercharged 5.4 liter V8 any guesses can you guess down below what I may or may not have bought nope that's not it nope that's not it although I do love those and have one with a roof cut off let's keep going Oh, we're getting warmer they're getting warmer. No, that's not it, but it's getting warm. There is something on the other side of that ram with stripes. With a NASCAR spoiler on the real ta rear tailgate, this is a 2008 Ford F-150 Roush in really, really rough shape. Rough shape? How rough shape of Craig are you talking about? Rough shape. Rough shape. Rough shape. And then the front bumpers, yep, front bumpers are rough as well. And then the racing stripes, all battered and tattered. And then you can see the rust down there. And then you can see the rust down there. And then you can see the rust up here. Now, if you didn't know before, now you know, I'm moving to Florida. I've made videos on videos about why I'm moving to Florida. This truck is the definition of why I'm moving to Florida. I am so sick of rusty vehicles. This truck should be amazing. This truck should be incredible. And it is not clearly because why New England rust now that's not so bad I can live with that the interior decent signed by Jack Roush this is a stage one Roush f-150 now if it was a Mustang stage one would be like your trim package your trim level so you can see it says Roush on the pedals are like billet aluminum pedals it says Roush signatures embossed stitching on the seats you have your two-tone leather interior you have your center console shifter you have your, these are not Roush wheels. You have your spoiler on the tailgate. You have your racing stripes, your stage one badging, dual exhaust, I think comes from the factory. Then it has the lower stripe. What do you call these lower stripes? Rocker stripes, all the way down, saying Roush on it. You have your Roush stage one badging on the side as well, hood scoop, and then your sport like STX or FX type fender uh, front bumpers and your lower valance. Now going all the way down the side, there's even more value into this because it's a crew cab, not a quad cab. If it was a single cab, honestly, that would be even cooler because it's more like a lightning style. It even has the racing stripes on the roof, as Tim Allen calls it, on the roof. Now I'm not going to open the hood yet. I wanna find out. I think these things come supercharged. And if they come supercharged, I think they have over 500 horsepower. I couldn't open the hood in the lane, so I went completely on a guess. I'm gonna look up the specs right now. All right, here we go. If I Google 2008 Ford F-150 Roush Stage 1, then they had a Nightmare Edition that has a supercharger, larger intake manifold, intercooler, upgrade, upgraded radiator, and air induction system, a 4R75E four-speed auto, and a 373 limited slip gears. Uh, the in, they invigorated the 5.4 and said to pump out 445 horses and a healthy 500 horse and a healthy 500 foot pounds of torque. It retains Ford stock electronic four speed overdrive automatic trans slip rear slip. Of course, this beastly truck should look as aggressive as its capabilities. So I'm thinking 
This is the Nightmare? I don't know. Zero to 60. Then we'll go here, like the Crew Limited Roush Supercharged. Roush Stage 1 questions. I went through that. It was all nonsense. And then you go here, like the new ones have 705 horsepower. Going here, the it's really just difficult to find out. The F-150 Roush Nightmare. I'm assuming this is the Roush Nightmare because it looks just like all the other images, including this black one right down here. 5.4 liter supercharged V8. Now before I open the hood, let's just turn it on and see. Start it up. That's a good sign. I cut my finger better. Start it up. It sounds fairly healthy. We have a good amount of lights on in the dash. A good amount. Airbag. 4x4 low light. Why does this even have? Yeah, okay. Check engine light, door ajar, Roush. Okay, let's listen to the whine. I do not hear a I feel like that was a pretty good impression of a supercharger. More bad news, it was rejected for a state inspection in 2022, you can see, or 2023. So over a year ago, it failed inspection. This truck is clearly uninspectable. Let's open the hood. Now I mentioned before, an if bid means I am the highest bidder did a video about that with my Ferrari and the highest bidder not the winning bidder so the dealer the selling dealer the Ford dealer was traded into a Ford dealer they wanted significantly more they started the bidding at like three twenty five two fifteen hundred I started bidding at fifteen hundred it's like hard to say no to this truck at fifteen hundred dollars even in the condition it's at even though I don't want or need it if you dangle a carrot in front of a horse's face it's gonna eat it that's this truck to me that's the carrot so I bought it on a whim I'm the high bidder they have two hours to tell me if I did or did not receive it if they accept my high bid. Let's find out if it has a supercharger. Did I win or did I not win? Let's find out. Are you ready for this? Okay, down here, come on baby, have a supercharger. I don't think you do, but have one. I don't see one. Oh, son of a biscuit. It's just a regular 5.4 with a silly body kit. Come on, Google. I had 30 seconds to look you up and you gave me bad information. The heck do I need a rusty F-150 with stickers all over it for for $1,800 plus fees, which will put me at $2,000. Gosh darn it, Green Day said, do as I say, not as I do. I've been using that a lot lately. Don't do as I do, do as I say. Don't buy this stuff, don't gamble. You don't make YouTube videos, like the YouTube video will pay for most of this stupid truck anyway. <sighs> Hopefully I don't get it. I mean, just that stuff's unrepairable. Let's open it up. Typical timing chain rattle, I can hear it, but, then again, like, I mean, these seats have value. I'm not in the business to part things, okay? I don't want to be a part, part person, whatever, salvage, dissembler, dissembler? I don't know, whatever, I don't want that job. With that being said though, the seats have value. It has some weather techs. It has that like rear bed extender. It has like decent leather seats and pedals and it, it is a Roush and it's a running truck. And to be quite honest with you, like any running truck is basically worth two grand in any condition, as long as it runs and drives. So I do base a lot of my gambling on will I get my money back, worst case, and I will. I'll worst case get my money back, but that is, uh, that is not a scenario I want to be in. I want to be in a winning scenario where I win. I make money. That's the idea. Make money. So we're going to do a little lap, lap around the auction, see what's here, and then we will find out if I did or did not get that, and I'll tell you at the end of this video. They have two hours to tell me, so that's why it's gonna be the end of this video. Well, fun fact, I made a video about that Kia. A year ago this month, I bought this Kia at this auction. It was smoking like crazy. I gambled on it, I took it to the dealership. Actually, I registered it, because I had to register it because they wouldn't warranty anything unless I owned it. Registered it, paid them to put a new battery in it, $350. The battery died, their brand new Kia battery died. Cost me $350 waste of a battery. They did injectors, they did a turbo under warranty, all of it, awesome, covered except the battery. Then I brought it back, I sold it uh, at an auction, made like $2,500, and it was returned because the title said Hyundai, not Kia. Hyundai's like a sister company of Kia. So they returned it. I had then retitle it and have it say Kia, not Hyundai, and I've owned that car for a year now. Over a year, it's tied up $18,000-ish because it's green. Nobody likes that it's green. So today I'm running it through the auction. Uh, it is a 2021 with 44,000 miles, leather interior, heated leather interior, navigation, all wheel drive, four new tires, serviced at Kia, all warranties and recalls done. But sometimes you just have to take the loss. That thing's been tying up $18,000 for 12 months. You know how many times I could have rolled $18,000 over and over and over and made money and instead I'm just not making money so it's worth taking the loss and moving on rolling that cash into something else. The problem, I called the auction a few days ago, hey auction, beep boop bop, hey auction, I gotta get rid of a car, it's a good one, it's a 2021, can you give me a decent number? Sure, can you give me a number? It is literally 
the last car in its entire lane. Last car to run for the entire day, which is a real bummer, meaning like everybody's gone by then, so I'm gonna take, lose my shirt, take my shirt off, lose my shirt, take a bath on it, yeah, you know what I mean. I'm gonna lose on that car, just so I can free up some cash and like liquidate and move on. So market's changed, times are changing, people aren't spending their money, people are tightening up. That car that was worth 22 a year ago, I don't know what it's worth now. Today we're gonna find out too, so you get to like find out two things today. Here's something interesting, not because it's an H2, but because, but because it's an H2, that is really, really clean. Why is it so clean, Craig? Well, this H2 right here has 23,000 miles. Wild that something like this is still in existence. No rust, which if you look from New England, no rust because they're usually so rusty. According to my F-150, you will know that. This truck is amazing. All right, there's usually rusty. So cool to see something with, I said 23, 28,000 miles correction. I'm not doing it twice, Craig. Don't do it, don't do it. This is a 2016 Audi S3 with 12,000 miles. Craig, you know better. You know you don't need this car, but it is so fun, so quick, so nice. Wow, that is a... I don't need it. Walk away, Craig. Don't do it, Craig. Walk away. Don't do it, Craig. Walk away. You do not need a 2013 X5 with 138,000 miles. Continue to walk away, Craig. Continue to walk away. You do not need an Audi TT. Thank you. All right, I have to explain something. I want to talk about something for a second. I got that F-150. Did I want it? No. But if it was supercharged, that's pretty cool. I paid a whopping total of $1,935 with fees. Now, Craig, why did you or did you not know that it did or did not have a supercharger? Craig, why? Because sometimes when you say things, it doesn't make sense. I don't know, all right? I don't know. I know sometimes I'm just rambling. You know that already. If it had a supercharger, basically that supercharger, that engine is worth $1,935. That is pretty cool to spend two grand on a supercharged Roush pickup. Now, it is not supercharged. So I paid two grand on a not supercharged Rush Rusty Roush, Rusty Roush pickup. But it's a crew cab and it's a pickup and somebody that needs a yard truck, it's still worth two grand. So to me, it was worth the gamble. Like I started bidding at 1500, somebody bid 16, I went to 17. Add $235 auction fee, I'm into it for under two grand. For a pickup truck with leather, like that, those seats are probably worth it. I'm not gonna part it out. But to somebody, like I bet I could list that for three grand, or 3500, and somebody's gonna want a Roush pickup truck in really, really rough shape. The problem is, it is rough, and I'm not gonna sell it inspected, and I'm not gonna do any services, and I'm not gonna detail it, I'm just gonna list it the way it is, mention everything that's wrong with it, I'm gonna get 1,000, or Lauren, is gonna get 1,000 Facebook Marketplace messages saying, $1,000 cash today, or worse, what's it need? Will it take a sticker? Which, like, over the years has just burned inside of me that creates instant fury. Inspection stickers here. People go, will it take a sticker? Will it take a sticker? Will it take a sticker? Is it inspectable? No, it's not. Read the ad, please. People aren't gonna read the ad. They're gonna message me. You might not have noticed because my sunglasses were on. My eyes were closed as I was calming myself. I'm doing it again. People are not gonna read the ad. They're going to ask what it needs. They're gonna ask if it's inspectable. And then they're still gonna negotiate even though I write firm or whatever. It's like, why even, well, I might as well just post pictures and then answer all the same questions that people ask me anyway. Back to the auction, rant over. And here we go, the last one in the lane is my car. So I own it for like, I don't know, almost 18. We'll see how we do today. A few minutes later. So here's the problem with running at the end of the day. The Kia just ran through, literally no bids, no bids. So, no, there's no, look at, look at, three of the lanes are closed. There's no one around. And unfortunately, the end of the day is when the junk sells because like the non-reputable cars or the people that don't run cars regularly end up running the cars at the very end because that's when they get their numbers, which is what happened to me. A few moments later. Well, the auction is over. I gotta tell you, I really like this car. And it freaking bums me out that it didn't sell. And it's an indicator of the entire market, which I have a video coming. Like the market has completely, completely changed. Everybody, not just cars, not just the car business. Everyone has throttled back. You may not think it's happening. And yeah, like there are people that believe that, oh, the economy is up and I was, we're not in a recession and things are good and the stock market is up. And all right, keep pretending. It, it's not, all right? I'm telling you right now, from a guy who has not had money, from a guy who has made money, and from a guy who sees how people are spending, and then also how it affects me personally and in my business, I'm telling you right now, 
things are different and they're going to continue to be different. So just be aware. And I don't know why I'm getting into that. This is all about cars. I have other videos about that stuff. Let's go to get this F-150 the heck out of here. The point was that Kia was valuable a year ago and now it's not worth anything. All right, so that's how things have changed. Let's go check out this F-150 and get it the heck out of here. All right, honestly, in 2008, this thing was cool. Now, I don't know. I don't know, I burped while I was saying that. I don't know, it's still kind of cool. For a beater. Now, if I lived in Florida, this wouldn't be rusty. Granted, the stripes would still be cracked, but it wouldn't be rusty. Four by four low, let's, maybe it's just engaged. Let's put it in neutral. We'll turn it to four by four low. And now the light shuts off. Well, that's odd. I put it in low and the light shuts off. Put it in high, okay. High, high, oh, high. Okay, we're in high. Turn it off. Ah, yeah, the light is off. Check engine light is not flashing, which is a good sign, but we have an, a tire pressure light and even the airbag light shut off. So we only have a check engine light on, which is getting better. Does the radio work? No radio. Wait, usually just the screen that fades out. Yeah, there's something there. So we'll do FM. Hey, yo, hello. Oh, I love this song. Some George Thorogood. I love me some George Thorogood. Is the AC cold? Marginal. Does this shut? Yes. All right. It has a brake, toe brake. You know, it's rusty, but it's a truck with leather and 4x4 and crew cab. There's still some value into this. The airbag light's on. Good oil pressure, though. Let's just see if it drives. Craig, what do you Oh, We have power steering. That's a good sign. First, second. That was Robert De Niro. No, I can see myself and how bad that impression is, so no, I can't. No, forget it, I'm not even gonna try. All right, it runs, it drives. Let's hit some speed bumps. Mm, okay, not terrible. This list says baby purr. Unimpressive. Unimpressive. I uh, should have checked the brakes before I did that. Check this out, though. Towing an aluminum trailer with an aluminum car. I thought that was kind of cool. My cyber truck. Well, that's all for now. You get to really, truly see the pitfalls of owning a car dealership and making stupid decisions like I do. I used to be much better at this job. You watch. You know. You know what I do. A few days later. Welcome to Las Vegas. I am at the National Independent Auto Dealers Association where I spoke today. Nothing to do with this video. I ended the video. I actually finished the video. And then I said goodbye. But the truck sold. I didn't want to leave you with uh, like fully loaded or whatever. I sold the truck within like four days. Now I listed it for sale uh, for $3,500. I had $1,002,000 cash today offers on Facebook Marketplace. I ended up selling it for $2,800. And it was annoying. So here's Facebook Marketplace. You can see how many people messaged me on this truck right here. Lunch, lots of my RV, truck, truck, truck. A lot of people asking questions. A lot of people just giving cash offers. And then like, we'll go to this one right here. A lot of people just not responding in general. And then it just keeps going like, oh my bad, I accidentally hit the button. Would you like to see it? No response. It just goes on and on. Hello, just following up, no response. They ask questions. So that's Marketplace for you. Now I talked about Facebook Marketplace a little while ago and how frustrating it is. It was exactly like I said it was, but after like filtering out all the nonsense, we ended up selling it for $2,800 cash. So we made a profit of $800 in like two or three days. It was a pretty decent turnaround. I literally did nothing but drive it from the auction to my parking lot, my overflow lot. Left it there with some pictures. Like still had the writing on the window. So $800 for literally moving a car from one place to another. If you want to learn how to do these things, like that was pretty simple. It's more getting your dealer's license. If you want to learn how to get your own dealer's license, I have a course that teaches you how to do that. You can go to www.stuckyourdealership.com and learn how to do that for yourself. 800 bucks, like two days. It wasn't a mistake, I guess. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give me a thumbs up down below. Subscribe for more car-based videos. See you all later. Thanks for watching.